What's up, League? We are back. It is week five. Week four in the books. The Cinco. The Cinco. It was another uh, really good week. We looking at the standings. We are down. The, there's two left. Two undefeated teams still sitting there. Somehow the Snake sitting there at four and zero, oh, but behind the Gladiators, who have literally been running through the league so far. No one has really tested him. Well, actually, no. Rocket Charlie did. Rocket Charlie tested him down to as about as good as you can test somebody. Down to a point. What was it? Point oh three or point oh eight or something. Eight. Point oh eight. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So he has Steelers been tested. Defense. He has had to sweat one out before, but other than that, he has been rolling. So he is sitting in the one seed. He has way more points than anybody else by a large margin. Um. I'm coming in at number two, still 4-0, but I will say that my uh, points four now looks a little more like I belong, um, where before it was my points against were so low, but it's looking a little better. So I'm at 486. I am second in points in the league, so I feel like I belong 4-0. Then we got just one 3-1 and one team. Orf at 3-1. and one. He has a very solid team, too. I was able to edge him out this past weekend. Uh, but he looks real good and ready to go. The Possums, after two and zero start, two and two, still look like a very much a contender. Still a very good team. Um, he'll be looking for a win. Who do you got this week, Nate? FNG. FNG. So you'll be looking for a win there. He's his team's kind of struggled, and he's got some guys on by. So looking good for Crady there. Austin also two and two, pretty solid team. Um, FNG two and two, even with the struggles, the RB two and all that, he's still at 500. The Renegades at one and three, the Maulers at one and three, the Giggle Fucks at one and three, and Martinez now currently sitting all alone at the bottom at zero and four. He was gonna maybe be a guest on the pod today, but it doesn't look like he's gonna show his face. Maybe until he gets wah, a wall, wall. So he's struggling. And, you know, he said things like, I'm not good at this. I'm willing to, you know, he's willing to admit, hey, here's an idea. Bring a fucking cheat sheet to the draft. It might help you. Bring, do something. He he comes unprepared. He wears that as a badge of honor. But I think it comes back to hurt you. You got to prepare a little bit. But he's, he made some great picks. I think if there was a little more research there, he'd be in a lot better shape. Um, Cause there was some definite steals and maybe not just cutting all your players before they have a chance to, to show what they can do. But anyway, so that's the current standings. Um, we're going to switch it up a little bit and do kind of some quicker matchup reviews, um, streamline it a little bit and save time for some picks at the end. So I'll go ahead and jump into one. Now um, I'm going to go into the Martinez and um, FNG Brian Todd matchup where it was not a close one. Um, FNG won 121 to 73. He, Justin Herbert, killing it. I think maybe around right around QB1 right now somewhere. He, you're getting good value back for that pick. Um, so he looked great. And Bijan Robinson definitely looks great. And Mark Andrews, huge game. Um, Martinez plugged in Zach Wilson. Went okay. Went better than I think most of us expected. Uh, but he just didn't get production from anyone else. Nobody else even worth really mentioning. Jamar Chase continues to be a very tough pick. I mean, had he gone CMC or Jefferson there or even Bijan, um, he'd be in a lot better spot. But um, so that was it for that matchup. Big win for FNG. He was desperate for a win. Real quick, yeah. I'll make a quick comment. I think it's important to note um, the Zach Wilson play was pretty impressive by Martinez. Yeah. He's vision that he had to see through and um, you love to see it pay off. That's inspiring, inspiring fantasy football management right there. Yeah. He did. He did something similar uh, early in the season. First or second game, he set Joe Burrow for somebody else. It wasn't Wilson, yeah. but he, we, we were all like, what are you doing? And it, it, that, whoever he started, I can't remember who it was. Gino it was Smith. Who he started. Yeah. Gino well, Smith. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, lack of research, but he's had some, uh, some, some pretty solid picks. Yeah, I mean yeah. he's good at fantasy football. Just got to prepare a little more. Not trying to dog the guy. I'm just I'm. Uh, I think he's good at fantasy. He's got two yeah. titles. He just he doesn't prepare like some of us do, and you know it is what it is. 
All right. So after that matchup, um, I'll just run into the next one real quick and just knock them both sure. out. We also had the Maulers and the ship is coming to the sip. Um, this was another lopsided win. Um, Lucci, he's covering his face. He's embarrassed. He's a defending champ. He's had struggles. He lost Nick Chubb. Um, he drafted Najee Harris. There's been a few things. Um, but really for Austin, it was driven by Josh Allen with one of the biggest games of the year, 36 points. And Nico Collins, 32, which is pretty crazy. Um, those Look two players alone really put him over the hump. Russell Wilson had a solid game, but other than that, um, not really much notable there for the Maulers. So Maulers desperately looking for a win to stay in this thing. Um, so that's it for those matchups. Rocket Charlie, what you got? Uh, I'll be t- uh, tackling Crady and Goddard. Um, another lopsided matchup this week. Uh, Goddard won 151 to 102. Crady had a very awesome performance from CMC. Guy went um, full Devin A. Chain uh, on Sunday. Then uh, really disappointing performances from the Olive Garden. Uh, I think they were closed on Sunday, closed for renovation. Uh, Tua put up a, a 13, kind of a stinker for him, the way he's been playing here. And and Crady's boy, he continues to be hurt. He uh, he let he keeps himself back up to T. Higgins, give chance after chance after chance, and uh, the guy is just not uh, rewarding Crady at all for his loyalty. Um, T. Higgins also, I think, laid the hit on Demar Hamlin. So, little credit there for Lucci's championship in a way. Uh, I just don't like that guy. I think he's bad at football. Be out of the league and definitely out of Crady's lineups from here on out. Um, on Goddard's side, step on huge game. Um, you know, uh, feeding off that Josh Allen. Performance. Dallas defense was back in form. They put up almost thirty points every time you get. That. The defense, you have a strong chance to win. Raheem Mostert was really the only um, standout bad performance on his team last week with four points. DK Metcalf, DeAndre Swift, some um, <laughs> good games. So, yeah, um, Crady falls to two and two. Goddard moves on to four and oh, covered. Um, I don't think there's any concern, just a bad week for Crady there going up against who's the highest scoring team in our league. So, moving on to next week. That's all I got for that one. Well played. For yeah, I mean, two. you score 150 points. I mean, it doesn't matter who you're playing. You're getting a double that's there. Two, right? That's two weeks in a row against going against the uh, league's highest score. So we'll get we'll get back on track. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. yeah. maybe you can make the schedule next year, Grady. Yeah. Right. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> Funny, y'all say that because again this week I'm playing I know, the only I know, other undefeated team in the league. So for someone I setting know, up a schedule, I, I sure made it tough for myself. He just so happens to have his entire team on by. So you're giving me too much credit to think I'm smart enough to know that. There will be an asterisk. There will be an asterisk, just like Lucci's championship beside this win. No asterisk. I got your back, Mike. No asterisk. There's no, no such thing as asterisk. You, again, you're giving me too much credit, Nate, to think I could come up with that on my own. A lot of work was done to figure out this schedule for Mike. <laughs> he knew. Anyway. Yep. Right. All right, Nate, what matchup you got this week? I got the uh, Giggle Fucks and Rocket Charlie's Renegades. It was a great week in Giggle Fuck camp. They uh, got their first win, and he – had every reason to check out and he didn't. And now he got a, he kind of stole a win because a lot of his guys are going to be trending in the right direction as far as uh, availability from JT to Saquon. He could, uh, with Kyron, he'll, if those two guys work out, he could have a three headed monster there. Um, but, and, or right, too. Yeah, his, uh, his main contributors were uh, Fields had a great game. Kyron Williams is the waiver wire grab of the year by far with 26 points. And then he just really had even production along the whole team. 10, 11, 14, 11. And, you know, that's whenever you have a nice round, rounded out squad, he just barely edged out Rocket Charlie, who, you know, he's had a rough year. He's lost some close matchups. 
Anthony Richardson came back with another big performance um, following his concussion, 29 points. Derrick Henry came to play with 23. Josh Jacobs seems like he may, may be trying to turn it around, although it's a little too early to say. And Aaron Jones really cost him, put up a stinker, probably cost him the victory of 1.9 points. Uh, the Gades will look to bounce back. And, um, you know, I think overall you can't keep scoring what you've been scoring and keep losing. Unless, of course, you have a year like I had last year, in which case you can keep losing and be in contention for the Derwich. So you got to watch it. But I think uh, I think eventually you're going to start pulling out some, some Ws. And that's all I got. Nice. Lucci, you want to hit us with the last matchup? Yes, sir. Um, I got the commish makes up rules or makes rules up. Uh, and commish the snake. Mac yes. rules up as he goes. <laughs> God, I, can't, uh, I can't see the rest of it. The commish makes up rules as he goes. Um, no, Mac. And, 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 well, yeah, I mean, Mac, 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 I got to get it. I get it. We made fun of the Pekers, so I guess we got to make fun of that. Uh, as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, dude, Wookie got 115 points from like four players. Um, you know, Jackson with 28, Jefferson with 23, AJ Brown with 34, David freaking Montgomery with 33. Like, I mean, that's kind of crazy. Um, dude, you got four players that put up 115. Um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be really hard to lose pretty much. Um, uh, you know, average to, to below average performance from everybody else on your team. But those four players went off. And when you have players that, that have that kind of boom, uh, you know, capability, um, you know, you can put up 146 like you did. So um, overall, really, really high, second highest performance in the league. And, and uh, most of it came from four players. So you're on the up and up, man. I mean, you survived the first two games. Um, you know, just kind of barely hanging on low, lower point totals, relatively speaking. Um, and then now you're kind of, your team's kind of hitting stride. Um, so, um, not as scary as maybe Goddard's team, but you're four and for a reason. Um, squad's looking good, man. Um, and then, or if, you know, um, it, he's got the, the stack with Mahomes and Kelsey and they just have not, the Chiefs in general offensively have not looked good. Surprisingly, it's in their defense that's been winning them games. You know, Mahomes, 13 points. Kelsey, 9 points. It's not terrible for Kelsey, but not what you expect. Um, you know, his 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 big point total was Devon A-Chain, or A-Chan, as he wants to be called now. Um, you know, there's some there's some uh, discrepancy on what people remember in terms of me making fun of uh, Martinez picking that pick. Um, you know, I'm not sure that actually happened. Um, I was high on, on A-Chan and, and, and during the draft, so we'll see. But that guy... 75 points in the last two weeks, um, even though we got our ass kicked by Buffalo. He still had 25 points. Um, really crazy, crazy stat for him, for A-Chan, is he has 28 touches on the season. Six of them are touchdowns, um, which is just nuts. Um, and that, that guy is uh, – and that's a wave of wire pickup for Orr. So, um, great pickup. Um, you know, I don't know if he had foresight to see this coming – but yeah. great pickup nonetheless. Um, ultimately, just wasn't quite enough. I mean, again, you know, you score 146, 150 something points. Um, I mean, it's damn near impossible for you to lose. So um, even if Mahomes and Kelsey had a better game, the likelihood of, of, of him pulling it out is, is slim to none. So, um, yeah, um, 4 0 for the Snakes and uh, season looking bright for him, man. So I'll just say it was a, I was, expecting looking at that matchup early on not to expect to put up 140 something points i was expecting looking at all my guys done at the four o'clock window and then kelsey and mahomes to go at night it was like here comes the slow death the sunday night slow death but i had a big enough lead and then they really you know wouldn't have really mattered but they yeah they did they had like 21 points combined which is like extremely low for those two you know Yep. A lot of distractions in the Kelsey yep. camp, I think, right now. Almost like you knew to ch- uh, to play Orf week four. Like, that would happen. Yeah. Weird how I that was. The that Taylor one. Swift thing and all. That, yeah, it was yeah. good foresight. Yeah. Again, <laughs> I appreciate the credit from you guys that I could be that smart. Right? It means a lot. Yeah. Anything we can do to take away from your victory. <laughs> 
All right. Well, that was good. That was a quick roundup of last week's matchups. Now yeah. on to the current yeah. rankings. Well, let's hit, let's hear your rankings first. You or you want picks first? Well, let's do some rankings here through week four. The uh, <clears throat> how you guys want to do it? Tight ends, running backs, wide receivers. What do you most go for? Prefer? You pick. Just go. Roll with we'll it. We'll go. We'll go quarterback first. Crack in the top ten. C.J. Stroud. Wow. Uh, Wilson still hanging in there at nine. Kirk yeah. Cousins. Two at six. Jalen Hurts at five. Jordan Love at four. Lamar Jackson, three. Josh Allen, two. And uh, Justin Herbert at one. Running back wise, David Montgomery back in the top ten. DeAndre at nine. Brian Robinson Jr. at uh, eight. Tony Pollard at seven, Bijan Robinson at six, Kenneth Walker the third at five, uh, Devon Fourchan at four, fittingly, big Fourchan guy, uh, Kyron Williams, Raheem Mostert, and Christian McCaffrey at one. Yeah, I gotta say Mostert wasn't gonna hold on to that RB one spot for very long. Uh, I think he'll only did. He might have without a chan, man. He might have. Like, A-Chan has just come out of nowhere. But, but as a Dolphins fan, you know, aren't there two other running backs? Isn't Jeff Wilson coming back? And what's the guy know. with the Jihad Jeff name? Will- yeah. Uh, it- yeah. Am- uh, Ahmed. Ah- Ahmed. Yeah. Yeah. But there's no, like, K or Q in his name. It's like A-H-M-A-D, but they pronounce it Ahmed. There's, like, a K in there somewhere. Yeah, I don't like uh, that. I don't know. Most- <laughs> it's kind of like the – uh... Most are due to get hurt soon. It's a yearly thing. I he, think there's that, but I think that there's too much uncertainty who's going to be the guy. Like, uh, I guess you start a chain dude, right now, or a chain. Yeah, he's he's the guy moving forward, bro. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't up. feel good about starting Mostert at all. No, but at this point, I trade for him. It's slim pickings well, in the meth lab. Yeah. Yep. All right, out. Right. Adam Thielen at ten. Mike Evans at nine. AJ Brown at eight. Nico Collins at seven. Devontae Adams at six. That's off one fucking game. That's crazy. Against me, of course. <laughs> so, yeah, but he, they're, the Houston offense is um, something you want a piece of, I think. Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs, Puka Nakua at four, Tyreek Hill at three, Keenan Allen at two, Justin Jefferson at one. Wow, Keenan Allen at two, huh? If what you a- look at – Real, I'm not not taking too long. But Justin Jefferson's yardage to this point is like eye popping. Like he has like 560 yards receiving already on the year. Mm-hmm. Dude, set I think him and Tyreek are. Him and now he's on pace to to be further than Tyreek, and I think him and Tyreek in terms of yardage are both on pace to get over 2,000 yards. Yeah, with the added game, that's going to happen soon. It's just a matter of who. But I think yeah, Jefferson yeah. and maybe both this this year. Yeah. Maybe. We'll see. Hopefully neither. Uh, Zach, excuse me. We got, yep, tight end number 10 on the year, Zach Ertz. Tight end number nine, Tyler Higby. Jake Ferguson. Travis Kelsey at seven. Hunter Henry at five. I think I missed somebody. Sorry. Hunter Henry at five. Mark Andrews at four. Evan Ingram at three. Uh, let me start over, guys. Got Zach <laughs> Tyler Higby, Jake Ferguson, Travis Kelsey, Hunter Henry, Mark Andrews, Evan Ingram, Cole Komet. Huge game. Uh, moving up to tight end number three on the year. Sam Laporta at two and TJ Hawkinson for the third week in a row. Tight end number one. Wow. Yeah, Cole Komet's on my bench. And I still, even after that game, don't feel comfortable really starting him. You just don't think you're going to see that again, probably. Um, who's your tight end instead of – who'd you start instead of him? Kittle, who's – this is my first year with Kittle, and it is frustrating as hell. But you know the week you pull him out of your lineup. Yeah, he's going to go off for 25. 20 points, you know. It's yeah. Just a, yeah. That guy sucks. No. Um, <laughs> all right, that's all I got for rankings. Um, not worse than my tight end, though. All right, that's the little recap of the rankings. All right, time for the first ever edition of our picks, our pod picks. So let's get into the first matchup of the week. Now, when we review our own matchup, we obviously don't vote. 
So each person is going to be reviewing four matchups a week, and then we'll look at it and see uh, kind of what, you know, how we look next week moving on and kind of see who's who's picking the best. So the first matchup, so I won't vote on this one, but it's the Snakes and the Gladiators, the two 4-0 teams. There will be one 5-0 team at the end of this week. Who is it going to be? I will say, even with Goddard's bye weeks, he put together a hell of a starting How line. How convenient. Oof. Still very strong. <laughs> uh, I'm going to vote for the Snakes this week to take the uh, to take the victory. Um, snakes are rolling, man. They got a strong a strong lineup, and I think Goddard's bye weeks are gonna are gonna play a factor. Nate, I think Goddard keeps winning. All right, so Nate down for Goddard. No surprise there. Lucci, <laughs> um, man, I'm. Uh... No offense, I'm rooting for Goddard. That guy deserves a ring. I said this the other day in the last podcast. The guy seems like he's always in there. Um, so I'm kind of rooting for him. Nothing against you, Mike, but I do think you're going to win, not only with the bye weeks, but Eckler's still out. So, um, you know, the combination of all that, your team's kind of hitting stride at the right time. So I'm going to go with, with the Snakes. All right. So we got two for the Snakes and one for Goddard. Next matchup. The Maulers and Orf. So this one, you're going in heavily um, an underdog already based off the you know percentage, which we know is is uh, horseshit a lot of the time. But looking at it, you don't really see it that lopsided. Um, you know, I I've got to say, I, I think what I'm just going to say, I preferred it before they did the percentages. I think it was yeah. maybe three years ago they started to do that shit. I wish I could turn that off somehow. Me too, because it's misleading. It, so, even though you know it's bullshit, you still see it and you kind of believe that. it, even though you know. But you'll have one play and it'll sway like all the way the other way off one play. The percentages don't uh, – it doesn't work like that. Like, you know. Well, yeah. What we should consider <laughs> moving forward because they do have a line posted. What we should consider moving forward, not now, but maybe in the future, is is taking the, the spread Thanks, versus right. the actual versus the actual winner and loser. I like that. I like that. We'll talk Maybe about we'll it. Maybe that I don't want to delay. That's a that's a great yeah. idea, actually, because you're twenty five point. You're you're plus twenty five right yeah. now. So with yeah, that, I'd I would Orf. probably <laughs> pick you to. I don't know. I think I'd take you in that if I'm betting on the line. But um, yeah. I'm gonna go with Orf. His team is really good. Um, he's he's got everybody there. I mean, he's got great players across the board. Um, the only guy he's missing is Mike Evans, and he just plugs in. Um, you know, Pickens and some of these guys, he'll be he'll be fine. So I'm picking Orf. Nate, I will go with Orf. Rocket Charlie, give me Lucci. All right, Ooh, I, like, I it. like it. I like it. I was going right. to say it was a clean oh. sweep. It was bolts and bore material up in the meth lab locker room all week long. We'll see what happens. Lucci's do his team's explosive. 25 points is egregious, and uh, just based on that alone, I'm giving, I'm going with Luch. All right, Find next it. matchup, Crady. And now we're not, we're not betting this, we're not picking the spread, but Crady, uh, 19 point favorite in his matchup. In this one, one um, FNG dealing with a lot of buys and injuries and all that stuff. He doesn't have his QB. He's got Purdy in there. I'm gonna say that he pulls it off and takes out the possums and the possums will be extra needed next week on the pod. Okay. So that's my pick. Nate. You don't go to me on my own matchup, you dick. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Would she hate for some um yeah man, I, I just uh I ain't the the possums have a really good team. They have the best running back in the league. I think two is gonna have a bounce back game. I mean they're playing the Giants. Um you know, I, I just don't see enough explosiveness um, on FNG's roster. He's got some some decent people on there, but with you know, he's got he's starting Brock Purdy as his quarterback. Uh, I, I'm going to go with uh, the Possums, man. I, I just don't see enough enough explosiveness on on FNG's roster to overcome uh, you know an angry Possum. Fair, Fair enough, enough. Rocket Charlie. Possums for me. I think Nate gets right again this week. Um, FNG's roster needs some some overhaul. Um, yeah, it is. Raider waiver needs to find that running back too. I'm surprised he didn't bid higher on Jaleel McLaughlin on waivers. 
Um, I thought that would have been somebody he would have targeted. Uh, I think Mike, Mike paid, what'd you pay for him though? Like 40 bucks? I, I paid, oh, I paid a lot for him just off potential. <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree that I thought. I smell desperation. No desperation, just a, a player, like an a up back. and coming guy. Um, not projected much this week, but you know, um, yeah. And I, I'm surprised as well. Todd didn't bid on him, especially cause he was so high on Samaj, Samaj P Ryan. And then that didn't work out. And this guy looks to be taking over P Ryan's spot. So yeah, kind of surprising. Yeah. He didn't go for that either. Um, yeah. and for the record, I think Nate probably does win, but I just picked against him. Next yeah. matchup. We got the renegades and the chip is coming to the ship. Um, this one, uh, unlike the other ones, is projected to be pretty tight. Rocket Charlie's a plus fucking three figure. points. Wait, what? That go fucking figure. <laughs> yeah, a lot of your matchups have been. So in this one, um, I'm predicting Rocket Charlie gets the win. I'm predicting Richardson goes off and Henry in these backs. I, I think he's going to do fine. Uh, we'll see what DJ Moore does to him after last week because that guy's been – hurting you when he's in the lineup and then he goes to your bench and blows up. So that's one of those frustrating things. You got him back in there. He's got to prove you right. So that'll be interesting how that plays out. So I'll take the renegades in that one. Awesome. Awesome. Potentially with uh, Cooper cup coming back, but it's still very up in the air about whether he plays that would sway me a little bit, but I think I have to assume that, the consistent production from Rocket Charlie's squad is going to continue, but he's going to come out on top this week. So I'll pick the gates. Uh, yeah, man. Um, I, I, I think I got to go with Rocco as well, man. I, I think Josh Allen is going to come back to earth a little bit. I mean, it was a double fucking whammy for me last week. Not only did he kick my ass in fantasy, but Josh Allen kicked my team's ass and, and fucking – made us look like a fucking high school team. Um, I think part of that is, is um, you know, just all the talk and hype from national media about the Dolphins. And I think Buffalo took that personal, you know, like if I could in, in, plug in the, the Michael Jordan uh, gif there or whatever, I took that personal. I think Josh Allen did. I think he comes back to earth this week. Um, and I think, uh, I think the Gades get it done. I do think it'll be a close game, um, but I, I think the Gades get it done. Um and they cover the spread and win outright. Wow. So the first clean sweep of the day for picks comes from the matchup that is predicted to be the closest. So that's interesting. All right. And the last one. Hey, the, big cave, one. The, the caveat to that is that if Richardson gets knocked out in the first quarter, <laughs> you know, we're going well, to be wrong. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. True. God. All right, and then we have the final, saving the well, the best for last. If you're in, if you like following the Derwich, we got the Giggle Fucks and Martinez stand like a man facing off. This has major Derwich. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Implications. Yeah. So it's the implication for these guys. Martinez has called it his Super Bowl, so it makes it you know it'll be fun. And this one predicted fifty fifty. Said even. I'll uh, I'll go first. Giggle. Okay. Fucks kick his ass. Okay. No other input needed. <laughs> go He's, giggle. Uh, fuck. Charlie, what you who you got in this one? You know, it pains me to say this, but I think Jordan may be starting to ascend a little bit. His team very bad and had some very very tough luck. Uh, injury wise and bad pick wise uh, early on, but his win against me seems to have fully rejuvenated him. Iron sharpens iron, and I expect Jordan to win this week, and I expect Martinez to move to zero and five because uh, he didn't prepare and he had a bad draft, and uh, this is what happens. I will have to go with the rest of the field. And say that uh, Jordan comes out on top. I honestly don't think that he is going to be in Derwich contention for very much longer. Um, I think uh, he's got a stud of a quarterback on his roster in C.J. Stroud. And I think that eventually 
he may have a tough decision to make, even though um, Fields likes to run. Stroud is uh, Stroud's looking like he was the pick. And uh, going forward, he might have to uh, plug him into his lineup. But I think Jordan's going to be the one to come out on top this week. And uh, B-Mart is going to go to the beach. He's going to go for a bike ride. Early. And then might slap an old man, who's to say. <laughs> but I'll have to go with five. Yeah. Yeah. I'm struggling with this one. I want to take Martinez kind of to win it. I wish that he would switch Sam Howell out of his starting lineup. I just I don't like that. I think that I will be on paper to say if he plugs in Burrow, as much as Burrow struggled, I get it. <clears throat> Playing Arizona, Arizona's not as bad as we thought. I get all that. I think if he had Burrow in there, I think he would maybe win. I don't like Sam Howell. I, Sam Howell's never started for a fantasy football team in our league. Um, I don't think I like that too much. So and I Burrow's guess I playing can... Arizona too, man. I, I know they snuck up on a couple people, but like that's a bad roster, dude. That's a bad Who, roster. Who's that? Washington or Arizona? No, no. Uh, uh, Burrow. The Bengals are playing Arizona. Oh yeah, yeah. So like, it's like that's just that, like I know again. I know they snuck up on the Cowboys. I know they. But, dude, that's a bad roster. Like, I could see that being a get-right game for Burrow and Chase and to have that stack. But, you know, we'll see. I don't want to convince him. You know, Martinez, just start how. I'll be fine. <laughs> all right. Well, should be interesting. We'll see how all this checks out next week. See yep. who uh, who leads in picks. And uh, that's it. Hope you all like the new format to our couple of viewers out there. Hope it worked out a little better. Trying something feedback new. is uh feedback is uh welcomed. Yes, yes. So we will see you guys next week. Anything else before we close it out? Um Crady, give me a little give me a little punch in the mouth there. Yeah, you, gotta get it in, you gotta get it in deep. You gotta go straight <laughs> back in there like that. Choke on it, you fucking whore. <laughs> Nobody cares about uh, the podcast, great way to end the pod. Right. Wait, wait, I'll, close out with, uh, I'll, I'll make with sure just one I... last message to Goddard. Goddard, if you're watching this and we know you are, congratulations. And you guys oh, have a good week. God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Have a good week, everyone. Okay. <laughs> All right.